This is uh, Sean Miller coming at you with another Workout Wednesday walkthrough video here. Uh, this is for week 13, uh, Mira's challenge to build a sales dashboard. Um, as we, as you can see here, uh, looking at the final dashboard, it's a, it's a really nice, clean uh, looking dashboard with lots of really great insights and lots of fun date uh, date calculations. So, um, I'm going to quickly run through some of the quick con key concepts and highlights. And so you can learn how to do this dashboard. Okay. So as we can see, as we look at the dashboard, we've got two KPIs here, um, on the left, on the left side here, we've got a sales KPI card and a profit below it. And then to the left of that, we've got uh, two bar and bar charts uh, showing a uh, month trend, um, monthly trend for each KPI. So one for sales, one for profit. So now one of Mira's uh, requirements for this was it needed to have uh, no more than three sheets. So uh, let's quickly um, dive into, uh, I'm just going to cover the highlights here. So let's dive into the sales, uh, into this sales card here. So we're doing year over year sales. So the first thing that you're going to notice the way that I set this, um, this up is I basically just created a bunch of these uh, date conditions. And this, and these date conditions are what's really going to drive the rest of my dashboard. Um, so very, very simple. We've got a current year where I'm just looking at the, does the year of the order date equal the year of the fixed max order date? Um, and then for previous year, it's going to look the exact same, only we're going to subtract one from the max fixed year, uh, that way. And the really great thing about this is as new data comes in, this is a this is a living document, right? This is a living data. So as new data comes in, this dashboard is just going to keep on refreshing, uh, which is really which is a, a really nice technique. Build it once, kind of you know do the QVC thing, right? The uh, set it and forget it. And then so that's gonna those are gonna be um, basically the the nuts and bolts for the sales and profit trend um, pieces here. So um, so from there, really, really simple PY sales. It's if previous year, then give me the sales. Likewise, if CY, give me the sales. And this is a dual access chart, both bar charts. And then I just and then we just play with the size of the bars until we're happy with the widths. Now, one thing you'll notice is that they're different colors, and I'm using and we're using measure names. Technically, I don't really need that. I could even uh, Tableau thinks you know that I want that, but I really don't. Um, so um, it's just that's just one of Tableau's things, but uh, it's there. We'll use it. Um, and so one of the really great things is because we're using dual access, um, and because we're using multiple mark, multiple pills on the row shelf, that means we get multiple mark cards. And the really powerful thing with multiple mark cards, uh, is you get to basically do what you want with each one. Uh, they are independent of each other. Um, so, you know, this one, my, my, uh, previous, my, the previous sales here, you can see if I edit my colors, they're both the exact same color. But you can see on the dashboard they're not. So what's happened here is I've set both of them to the exact same color. And then on my previous year, I just dropped the opacity down to about 40% until it looks good. So really, really powerful stuff. And then um, for the tool tip, what I did is, again, very, very similar stuff, only this this time I'm going to, what I did here is I'm doing 
basically looking at date names, right? And then what I'm doing is I'm doing a uh, doing a left calculation. So doing a left, that means I have to convert it into a string. So that's the date name that automatically does that. Taking the first three, that's going to give me the abbreviation for the month. So you can see right down here, uh, we have May. And then I'm adding a space, right? That's my, I'm adding a space. And then from there, I'm going to do a right calculation. So if I'm going to do a right, I need to have, I need to have a string. So I do date name again. And that's a fun thing. If you do date name and year, it'll still give you the year. Just, uh, it'll just convert the data type to a string. And then from there, I'm just taking the last two year, the last two digits uh, of the year. So you can see July 18, just like that. Pretty simple. And then I just do that again for current year as well. Okay, so this this one's pretty simple to 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 get together to get what you want. Now, for these sales cards, as you can see, and then for the profit, we just duplicated the trend and then replaced all the uh, measure replaced all the measures with profit instead of sales. You're off to, you're off to the races. All right, but for this for the for the KPI card, um, this is where it gets tricky, right? So. Uh, how do how can we have multiple uh, cards on here? Again, we're just doing the exact same thing. Or if you remember on our on our we had multiple rows. We're doing the exact same thing, right? We're just doing the exact same thing. I do sum zero here. It it could be any constant. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is just this is just basically a placeholder field. And it's a placeholder because I get mark card for each pill. And with that, I can do whatever I want with it, right? So if we go up to there to this first one, this is where, again, we'll just stick with sales. And then we just duplicate everything, change the measure to profit, and you're off to the races, right? So, okay. So let's look at this. First, we've got month to date, month MTD, month to date sales. And again, if we look at our date conditions, when we look at uh, month to date, what we're looking at is does the, we're looking at the date, we're doing date parts here. So does the month of order date equal the month of the max order date? And our max order date is March. So what we're going to do is look for does my month of order date equal the month of the max month date? And does the year of the order date for every record equal the year of the max order date? And does the day part of the order date, is it less than the day of today? All right. So this is, I mean, there are so many cool things that you can do with dates um, in Tableau. And so using by using date parts in this way, uh, we're only looking at the at the integers, the discrete integers. So does my does the month equal three? Does the year equal 2019? And we are using a um, we're using a different data set. We're not using the 2020 data set, uh, which is fine. No big deal. Um, and so does my year equal that? And does my day is the day of every record less than the day of today? And if we go back and look at our final dashboard, we can see that we need to be doing we need the max. This is the max date, the 24th of March, 2019. That's our max date. That's that's the max date that's being referenced in all of these calculations. So. So month to date. Once I do that, then it's so very very simple. I just do uh, MTD sales, which is if this calculation is true, then give it then return sales. So this PMTD. Well, if this is month to date, this is previous month to date, and basically what we're saying is, what was the, what were what was our sales? What were our sales? 23 days into the previous month. 
So uh, we have um, this previous this PMTD calculation here. Again, doing the exact same thing, only we're just going to take the that minus one on the month. So instead of three, we're going to be looking at the second month, February. And then, then we just say if that's if that if that date condition is true, then give me the sales. All right. So now let's look at month. Let's look at our next line, which is we need to do our month over month. So what we're looking at here, let's dig into this calculation here. What we're looking at is we're looking at does what is the difference between this month's sales compared to the previous month's sales to date. So we just take the difference of those. To get that little triangle, there's multiple different ways to do it. I'll show you how we did it. Um, if I go and format, so I put these all on my text card, and then if I format my, if I format this MOM, this month over month uh, value, you can see that I can put my arrow triangles right into the custom formatting. Uh, which is really, really cool. So that's how I was able to do that. All right, so this run rate. So run rate is um, is really interesting. So basically what, what run rate is, is a way to kind of annualize a measure um, to a set specific length of time. Could be a month, could be a quarter, could be a year. Uh, but it's just basically a way to say, if you were to keep on this, it's almost like pace, but a little bit different. Um, it just says, you know, what is, what's, how are you going to get there? Uh, and for that, we need two new calculations. So we need the, we need the days in the month and we need the days so far. So let's look at days in the month. So let's split this out a little bit. We're doing a date diff. So we're looking at, we're doing a date diff of the day, right? And so let's look at the day, the start date for our date diff calculation is the max, is the month of the max date. So that's February, or excuse me, that it's March. And then our end date is the next month, right? So what we're able to do is we take, we're doing a date add within our date trunk at the month level and we're going to our date add is at the month level as well and we are going to add one month from the max order date and we already know the max order date is march so let's take the let's add a month so that's april and let's subtract the days between that between the first of april and the first of uh, march Okay, so that's how we're able to get that. So that's the days in a month. And again, as this continues, as this, as each new, as new data flows in every day, every whatever that interval is, every time this dashboard loads, it's going to run these calculations. It's automatically going to flip over. And then we have our next calculation is days so far, which is just the day of whatever today's date is, okay? So now, in order to get the run rate, let's look at this calculation. So our month-to-date sales, the sum of month-to-date sales, divided by the number of days that have passed so far, and then that quantity multiplied by the total number of days in a month. So basically what you can say is, what you can, how you can interpret this is, currently month to date we're at 41.9K in sales. If you stay on this pace, by the end of the month, you should end up with 46.4K in sales. Because if we look at this calculation again, oops, not duplicate. If we look at this calculation again, we're taking the total sum of sales for the month uh, for the month to date, we're going to divide that 
by the days so far. So basically we're getting the this calculation right here is the average daily sales, right? So my total sales divided by days in the month that have passed so far, that's my average daily sales. I'm going to take that average daily sales and I'm going to multiply that by the total number of days in the month. And that's how I'm able to get that run rate. And then lastly, for year to date, that's very, very simple. <clears throat> we just look at this and we say, if CY, then sales, which is very, very similar to what we've done so far. All right. So, and then how we format all that? Well, we just put it all in our text. We just put it all on our text shelf. And then we just format our, our labels exactly as we would like them to look. And then we just duplicate all that, duplicate every single one of these in this folder, change the measures from sales to profit, and then basically build this to look exactly like this. So now whenever you go put them on the dashboard, now, very, very interesting. One of the, this is the last little trick here, right? So this is a tiled dashboard, and we're using padding. Um, this is a very good use of padding in this dashboard. I really, really like how clean this looks. I like the kind of shadow, the kind of shadow drop box uh, behind here for, which kind of helps draw the eye. Hey, this is where the information is. Everything else is kind of uh, contextual, right? So we're just stacking these. We're just stacking those right on top of each other. And then for this one, as you can see, it's one sheet, but it looks like it's actually two. And the reason that it looks like it's two is because we simply just floated. We floated a container and then we formatted it to look to be the same color and width as the rest of our dashboard. So that's how we're able to do that. All right, so really great challenge. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, it, I hope this video answered a lot of your questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, reach out to me or uh, Mira on Twitter. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time. Go forth and fizz.